Hey guys, so we're gonna be planting around the gazebo today in the front and kind of wrapping around the back side. I got some really fun seeds to plant on Benjamin's teepee. Uh, and so I'm hoping that they come up really fast and grow really fast so we can get that covered. Uh, this is kind of the last, well, it's not the last area I'm gonna plant in, but the last larger area that we typically plant annuals in. So I feel like, like we're honing in. <laughs> on the end of emptying the greenhouse of some things, which is nice because plants don't like to stay in these tiny cans for too long once it gets really hot. Today's high is only 80 degrees, so it's not bad. Still warmer than, like we haven't had a chance to acclimate to any kind of heat. So anyway, this area is in full sun. This should be fun. Standing underneath the pine trees right now, and you can see the front of the gazebo. So I'll give you a little pre-tour so you can see everything that's in here. It's a little bit like we have some work ahead of us. We're going to do a little bit of maintenance in terms of rose care. We're going to trim up the two um, spirals. Those are pyracantha spirals. I didn't trim them up earlier because they bloom in the spring and I didn't want to cut off any of their blooms. So now they look like a wild wildness. <laughs> and then we've got some more roses to deadhead over there and, and that sort of thing. So on this side of the little brick walkway, it starts off shade, which is quite nice. Like it kind of turns woodland-esque in here. I've got a North Pole Arborvitae spiral that we're going to tame today. It's kind of turned into a wooliness. You can see it once had a nice shape. And then Diamond Lake Hosta, and then there's some purple Shibley Lamium that's beautiful. I love it. And I am working on my ground cover game here. That's one huge difference between our garden and what one of the things I love about my parents' garden is that they've got a lot of ground cover, which just, it's beautiful, it's soft looking, and it helps suppress weeds most of all. Right down here, these are Serendipity Alliums. I've got them on both sides, so there are four, I think, right in here, and then I've got a patch right there. If you need an amazing annual, honestly, you guys, for a full sun spot, like you can see, this one gets way more sun than these. These are a lot shorter. This is an amazing perennial. You can see it's full of buds right now. It's really interesting looking. They almost kind of look snake-esque, don't they? Don't let that put you off though, <laughs> because they're amazing. So all of those buds will turn into beautiful purple spherical blooms. Pretty sure I have some pictures of them, but even when they're not in bloom, and they bloom for a really long time, but even when they're not, they look like this beautiful mound of grass. I just love it. I've got a lollipop crab apple right here, which hindsight, it probably doesn't get enough light all the way around, but it is full, it bloomed beautifully, and it's full of little berries or crab apples, I guess you could say. And these will turn bright red, which will be beautiful. I've got three carding mill roses right here, which need some work. We need to do some deadheading and some trimming up. Right here, look at this. Oh, is that not the most dreamy looking thing? So to me, the difference between carding mill roses and the Atlas rose, because I've got both of them in my garden, um, and they both are similar. Atlas is a little bit more saturated in color than the carding mill, so if you want something a little lighter and delicate looking, carding mill is beautiful. But in my garden, I noticed the Atlas rose has much stronger stems. Um, so you can see here that when this one blooms, the stems seem to kind of want to um, bend a little bit which for me when i'm making flower arrangements i kind of like that because it, they grace the side of vases really beautifully in the landscape they're not as awesome because they at last when they're in bloom i mean you can see the blooms because the stems are holding them upright um so that's just kind of one of the difference i see um carding mill has a stronger fragrance than at last although at last has a strong fragrance too um yeah i think it's a little bit different though for everybody depending on your soil type how much sun they're getting how much water they're getting and all those things anyway in the back i had rockin blue suede shoes salvia in here last year and one of them came back <laughs> which is nuts so i'm just letting it grow it's purple it blooms purple which is perfect that's what i'm kind of leaning on this year because you can see the color of our gazebo i don't love it i mean it's got like a redwood kind of stain on it so it kind of looks like reddish orange um and you know something that i'm just too chicken to paint right now <laughs> We will probably paint it at some point. Uh, but anyway, I'm erring on using cool colors. You can see in that cart, I've just got a lot of purple, a little bit of pink, because I want to kind of combat that warmth, I guess. And then I've got a couple of Veronica. I brought some more Veronica up to replant. I figured out that this bed, both sides, were getting hit twice by different sprinklers, plus they have a drip system. So the edges, like the stuff in the back's fine, but it was the edges that was getting that were getting hit so hard and so some of my veronica just didn't love it and they rotted out 
So anyway, that's something we've had to adjust. We have two Gembox Inkberry Hollies, which actually like more acidic soil. I thought this one was dead and it's just recently started to push new growth, which is really exciting. I do think I'm gonna remove these though, just because they're languishing. I'm gonna repot them um, and I'm going to treat them, probably give them some holly tone, maybe some soil acidifier and put them back in the greenhouse so they have a chance to recuperate. I think I might come in with lavender. I think that would be really pretty right here. And then on this side, we've got sunflowers that I did not plant. <laughs> in fact, I've not ever planted a variety that really looks like this anywhere. So I'm not really sure where they came from. I'm sure an obliging bird dropped them in our flower bed for us, but I'm gonna leave them because bless their hearts, they're growing so beautifully. Right beneath them, we've got five Boscobel roses. And these are a really beautiful, full cupped, multi-petaled, strong fragrance come from these roses. Really pretty. In the back, I've got two ginger wine nine barks. I've got a Procumbens blue spruce, just a uh, ground cover type blue spruce, which um, was getting a lot of water too. We've adjusted and you can see it's looking pretty good as well as the echinacea. I'm even surprised the echinacea survived all that water. Uh, I would imagine that would be the first thing that would go, but they're looking awesome. So this is called yellow, my darling echinacea. You can see all the buds on the, the plant there. More of the serendipity alliums. Then we've got a linden right here. I think this was Redmond. How can I not remember? Just planted this tree last year. Nice shade tree. And then we've got another North Pole Arborvitae spiral, which actually has recuperated a bit. I did a video, we'll try to find it, where I talked about, I planted three vertigo uh, penicetums in here, huge grasses. I planted them so close to that that the whole base of this spiral was shrouded all year. So when I cut the grasses back, I noticed that the Arborvita foliage was completely dead down here. It was all brown. And I'm noticing it's looking so much better. It has pushed some more green growth. I'm thankful because I really do like this structure right here. And then I've got a little quick fire hydrangea. I just planted at the end, uh, like end. Well, no, it wasn't the end. It was sometime last season. A Claire Austin climbing rose. It's a white climber. And then we did a video early on this year where I planted these pink diamonds dicentra. And right after I planted them, it got so cold, it completely, it looked like it killed them. I had to cut them all the way back to the nub. Like you couldn't see any leaves or anything and they've already rebounded. Look at this, look at all that growth and the blooms. One tough plant, let me tell you. And this dicentra gets sun for a good part of the day. And that's the other good thing about this variety. The other dicentras that I have grown usually need a little bit more protection like in the afternoon from the sun, but this one's just taking it like a boss. And then we've got a ground cover Veronica here. And then we're gonna swing this way because I do plan on putting some things in here. It's pretty open at the moment. So I've got some red noodle bean seeds. I'll show you the packet here in a second to plant around Benjamin's teepee. And then I kind of just wanna pop some annuals in here, maybe some taller growing stuff around the backside and then maybe some short stuff in here. And I kind of want to keep this open though, so that once I find my stepping stones or make them, I can do that project. I've been looking forward to getting this bed done because it's the one I see like from my closet window um, and up from our master bathroom window. This is the area that you see. So it'll be fun to have a nice, pretty flower filled view. So these are the beans we're going to plant around the teepee. These are red noodle beans. Growing these 18 inch long noodle beans is a riot riotously good time. They're an 80 day, says they're uniquely flavored, adds authenticity to Asian stir fries and curries. I love curries. Anyway, I thought that Benjamin would think that that was pretty cool. Then we've got super blue Angelonia right here. These grow like 30 to 40 inches tall. And then we've got meteor shower verbena. Love this one. Golden Dreams Coleus, I'm planting this next to the Carding Mill Roses because it was so gorgeous last year. I'm just gonna repeat it because I like it. We've got some Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo, which I planted these in Versailles, and you can see I'm going with a lot of purples. Here's the Veronica right here, super pretty, and Supertunia Mulberry Charm. I'll probably go grab a couple other things, but this is what we're gonna start with. I think what we should do first though, I'm gonna go grab my Felcos and my Kangaroo bag. Um, and we're gonna do some rose deadheading and some trimming and shaping before we actually set some things out. Don't wanna get too ahead of myself here. 
So let's tackle these roses first. You can see I've got some long canes I'm dealing with, as well as things like this. And what the interesting thing is, is wherever you cut these back, like if I were to follow, say this branch right here, back down to, get this untangled, back down to like, let's say right here, if I was to cut it off here, the next branch that comes out will come out in the direction that that set of leaves is facing. So you can see right here is a perfect example. See this set of leaves is facing this way and that's where that branch came out. So keep that in mind. When you're pruning roses, you want them to end up being base shaped without a whole lot of inner growth. So if I was to come in, let's say on this branch right here, this is where it ends. And if you follow it down, if I was to maybe like cut it right here, my branch is gonna come off and like grow back toward the center of the plant. And that's not necessarily what I want. What I would want is for the rose branch to grow out. So I'd go down a little bit more, like one more and cut it right above this set so that the new branch comes out this way and away from the center. Our goal is to keep the airflow good in these roses, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna set up the camera. Hopefully you guys have a pretty good angle and I'm going to just start trimming these roses up a bit, giving them a nice good shape. Um, and usually once it starts to get hot, like it's supposed to get close to 100 over the next week, it's just steadily climbing up. And I'm assuming that that's where we're gonna be at for the better part of the summer at this point. Who knows though with our weather, you never know. Um, but they always kind of put out a first flush, like a big flush of blooms, and then they'll kind of lull a little bit and put out a few blooms like they are right now, and then they'll come back again, especially if we, you know, deal with them and get them trimmed. Uh, they'll bloom a little bit more profu profusely. All right, let's get after it. That looks better. Now I'm gonna take after the spirals in the pots. And I think I'm gonna leave the grass. That's a type of Carex I put in there last fall with pansies, and they're still looking real good. May as well leave them. Well, those look a heck of a lot better. I'm gonna be in training mode with these though for the next probably one, two, maybe three seasons. You can see like little gaps in the growth right here. Yeah, right there. You can see how it needs to fill in right here as well as like in this section, it needs to grow and fill in more densely so I can round it out a little bit better. But with these, you have to be a little bit careful because after they bloom in the spring, they set these beautiful berries, these clusters right here and they turn bright orange in the fall. So they really, like I would love to come in and round this up a little bit more and shave all of this stuff off in order to round up the spiral, but it's not worth eliminating all the berries. So it's kind of like the pros and cons of having pyracantha as a topiary form. I mean, you get something unique in that you get blooms and berries, which you don't get with evergreens, but these lose their leaves for the winter and they're a little bit harder to shape just because you don't want to you know get rid of what makes them unique and they have thorns so keep that in mind <laughs> i'll show them to you in the fall though because that might make your mind up for you you might love the berries all right so i just need to do a little bit of cleanup on these roses right here there's not a whole lot of deadheading to do on these and then i think we can place plants and get them in the ground yay oh <laughs> just kidding i'm not getting off that easy i've got to trim this as well much better. Now we get to work with these. So Aaron decided to come out and help me og the holes and he just told me that I need to get rid of the sunflowers. It really needs to go. It's it looks like a I mean I know it's about to bloom but it looks like a weed right now. You kind of have to admit it looks a little bit like a weed. I like don't know. I got, I did get rid of the smaller one, you guys, because the bloom was almost spent. Look at that sad thing laying over there because of you. <laughs> because of me. Yeah. Don't so, you agree though? It kind of, it looks out of place. It's not supposed to be there. Well, it is out of place. Yeah. It's serendipitous. What does that mean? 
Serendipitous means occurring or discovered by chance in a happy or beneficial way. Oh, well, it is very serendipitous. Still needs to go though. Well, I can't do it. I can do it. You want me to do it? Oh, look away. We'll look away. You are a sunflower murderer. <laughs> but you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, well, I need two more Angelonia. Do you want to pop back behind the gazebo and grab me two? There's two. Actually, just grab me the whole tray. I think that you owe me that for taking my sunflowers away. It does make the layering look better though. Like that looks proper, like how I meant it to be. It's on the ground behind uh, the TP there. I need to work on these patio lights. One strand's hanging real low. All right, I'll pop some more of these in there. Those get 40, up to 40 inches tall, so they'll tower up above the roses. Right. Why do you need them in there? Well, because I need some purple spires sticking up no, continuously. It's, it's right, the way it is, it's all full. No, Don't no, no, Aaron. like right, I need one right here where the sunflower was, two. I need two no, in there. it looks full in there. Nope. Nope. Well, you can do what you want. It's not my thing, but. Exactly the right answer. <laughs> Okay guys, it's a new day. I decided when I got done last night just to call it a day. I needed to get everything watered in and the lighting was a little bit hard because some, half of it was in the shade and half it was in the sun. Um, so I think this morning it might look a little bit better. I did save all the tags um, to show you because I don't think I said all the names. So I'm gonna show you those really quick and then we'll take a look at the flower beds. Purple Illusion Veronica, the Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo, Meteor Shower Verbena, Supertunia Mulberry Charm, the Angel Face Steel Blue. Nope, it was super blue. That was the wrong tag. Toss that one. Purple Fountain Grass, Golden Dreams Coleus, and Sweet Romance Lavender. It does look better to have the sunflowers out. Don't tell Erin I said that. <laughs> but you can see the layering a lot better. You can see the nine barks in the back and it all looks kind of like a little bit more proper. But we'll start on this side. This is the one I started planting. So we've got the Arborvita spiral that's been trimmed. a Little bit in the shade, so I, I'm not sure. I hope it's easy to see. And then the Carding Mill roses look good now that they've been kind of pruned up a little bit. I think that's opened more since yesterday. In the back of the roses, we've got three Meteor Shower Verbena, that's the purple bloomer, and Golden Dreams Coleus, our volunteer salvia right there. And then the pots look good, I think with the indigo supertunia and the carex from last year. It's very simple and striking. Then we've got the purple illusion Veronica and this little bunch I moved maybe like six inches <laughs> over to make room for this lavender, sweet romance lavender hedge, which is on both sides. I think that looks way better than having those hollies at the end of the walkway. And the lavender, you know it grows. Uh, I can't remember how wide it is, maybe 18 inches or so. So it should kind of like soften the sides and kind of mask the sides of this brick walkway so it doesn't look so sharp right there. And then I planted two more of the Veronica's just to kind of complete that little group and then some Mulberry Charm Supertunias in front. And then on this side, again, the lavender hedge along the walkway. I planted three Purple Illusion Veronica's right there. Supertunia Mulberry Charm. There's the Lady Godiva Yellow Calendula, which I plan planned on putting in my vegetable garden, but I think that that little pop of yellow looks really good right there. And then a purple fountain grass. I think that'll be really pretty. I know that th that is two grassy textures together, but I kind of needed something red, something that was would bring a little bit of weight. Plus once these bloom and this grows to its height, you know, it's a mature height with its seed heads, they'll look beautiful together. And then in the back there, we've got a ton of the super blue Angelonia, which they grow 30 to 40 inches tall. And I've got them like chucked in between the roses. 
So I think they'll just come up with those beautiful spires. I love them because they look like delphiniums, uh, but they'll bloom all season. Another purple fountain grass here, and then another one right behind that meteor shower. So we do have like kind of a swoop of purple fountain grass in here. And then another Lady Godiva yellow with the Supertunia mulberry charm. More Lady Godiva yellow, so we'll have nice layering right there. And then I intermix some meteor shower verbena in with the angelonia over here. So that should complete it. It looks a little bit like from this angle, probably like a little sparse, but that's how annual plantings go. They always look like that kind of in the beginning until they start to fill in. And I honestly ended up not doing very much over here. I left my hose out, I see. I planted uh, four bean seeds at the base of each one of the bamboo stakes. And then I planted four Suncredible sunflowers back in here, just to bring a little bit of height and a little bit of brightness. And I may come in and add in a few little things. I kind of want to keep the walkway fairly open right here. And the beans, once they grow, they will really be bulky and they do get quite wide. Even though they're climbers, it'll still take up quite a bit of the space around here. So really, I only have room to do annuals or perennials, whatever I decide right in here. So I don't, you know, get in the way of the walkway and I could do a little bit along the stones here. But I'm really happy with the whole project. I think it's gonna be really pretty. I think having as much purple as I've got over there is gonna make me really happy this year. Last year, I can't remember exactly what I did, except for I had a lot of coleus in there, a lot of golden dreams, which um, against the cardi mills, it looks awesome. But when I had it in this entire area, it was a lot of, cause it's got kind of that, it's not orange, but it's got like some brown in it. You know, the veining is kind of brown and it was like a little bit too much up against the gazebo. And then I did like a darker colored sweet potato vine. So there was a lot of that brown kind of color going throughout the bed. And I felt like I had some improving to do on that. So I think adding in more color um, and more cool tones is kind of nice. Of course, every year you learn a little bit and you decide kind of how you want to shift things around and make things maybe a little bit different. Um, and there might be something about this that I decide next year, like the height was wrong here or I need to adjust something there or whatever and that's kind of the fun of having a few areas that you just plant annuals in because you can really just experiment and you know that you're not committed forever not that you're ever committed forever you can move perennials around too but you know what I mean so anyway that's it for today's video super excited to see how this fills in as I always say <laughs> but I always am I'm excited to see how things progress um, we are supposed to be getting some consistently hot temperatures like right under 100 degrees for the next 10 days So I'm expecting to see a lot of growth everywhere in our garden Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a really great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye